Welcome to Jungit's Games. Today, I'm bringing you a different type of video from what I normally make, and that's because this is a behind the scenes type of vlog where I will be going through the entire process of creating a playthrough. Uh, that's why I'm calling it Let's Make a Playthrough because we are going to essentially make this playthrough together as we walk through this vlog. Now, I do want to mention that the reason this vlog is being made is because it was requested by and won the vote from the contributing producer level supporters of this channel. Now, that happens over at the Patreon campaign, and if you'd like to learn more about that, then you can go to patreon.com slash Games. Now, I think without further ado, let's just jump into the process. Uh, I will be showing you how we're making the Train Topia tutorial and playthrough, and let's go ahead and start. Well, the very first thing that I do whenever I start working is I log my time. I use a free website called Toggle for this. I've used it for a couple of years, and it's worked out great. So the first thing that we have to do for this playthrough is actually learn how to play the game. Now, after that, we have to make a new project for Traintopia. And then this application lets me uh, put tags down, and I have one for setting up and learning. So now that the timer is running, it's time to start working. In order to do this, we have to head over here to the recording table. And as you can see, I've cleared it off from the previous project. Um, now, I am obviously recording this part with my headset that I normally record for the playthroughs. And what I have to do is open up the game and punch out all of the tokens, sort everything in a way that seems to fit well for the camera that's right over here, and obviously learn how to play the game. Uh, this is the first time I've even opened the box for the game, so it's time to dig in. All right, well, at this point, I've finished reading through the rules, and you may have noticed me get up a couple of times. That was to jot down a couple of notes, uh, a couple of clarifications I want to run by the publisher before I am 100%, but right now I'm feeling like 99% uh, about how the uh, rules of the game work. So at this point, I now need to set the game up to try and have it make sense for the camera. And in particular, I also need to figure out which um, of the tiles will be in the, in the game at the start. Um, I do stack decks and stuff at the start of these uh, tutorials because it's important to me to try and get to all of the important pieces as soon as possible. So I will make sure that there are good plays for each of the players to bump into new mechanics. Uh, for instance, in this game, there are these cards right here that have different icons on them. Well, I am going to start with this one because it has different icons on it instead of this one, which has three of the same and one different one. So I want to make sure there's a good variety because that is good for teaching. So yeah, it's time to figure out how this is all going to work out here on the table. All right, at this point, I think I am pretty much ready to go. I just sent an email with a couple of tiny clarifications about a couple specific things, but it's nothing big enough for me to not start working on the tutorial anyway. Uh, so yeah, it's time to start filming that, which means I'm going to bring out this camera right over here, and um, let's go right into it. All right, I've just finished recording the tutorial. It looks like that took, uh, actually, I'm not exactly sure, like an hour and a half or so. Uh, actually, if I cheat back over there, yeah, uh, it looks like it was maybe an hour and 15 minutes. So this one was a lot quicker than the average game uh, that I film. Uh, this is not a super heavyweight style game. Uh, sometimes these tutorials take up to three and a half hours. So fortunately, this one was rather straightforward overall. So at this point, I am going to uh, take all of these files and put them onto the computer and start editing this up. So here we are back on the computer, and you'll notice that I edit my videos using Final Cut Pro. Now down here, you'll notice we have an audio file, and this was recorded uh, from an audio recorder that takes what I say through the uh, headset microphone, and the rest of these are the video that also have audio that comes in from the camera that sounds awful. Now what I need to do is sync both of these things up so that I can just use the good audio. And you may notice when we look down here where we've combined the camera video with the uh, audio from the audio recorder that um, obviously not all of it is here. Now that's because my uh, video camera only records in 22 minute chunks. So I have to take the rest of the chunks of video and just put those down over here so that they sync up as well. 
After that, we can go into the actual video that I want to edit. We can pull the synced stuff down over here. And then I want to click this little button, which gets rid of the awful audio that comes in from the video camera. Now, at this point, I am not ready to go yet because you may notice looking up here that the uh, color is not too great. And uh, down here, all the waveforms are low. Now, that's because you have to do um, processing to make all this stuff work. And I have actually built uh, templates over the years uh, to make this a little bit simpler for myself. Uh, so in this case, I have one over here and it is called copy game and I just copy this whenever I do shots that are looking down at the game so this uh, has all of the, um, the video um, uh, uh, tweaks that I do as well as the audio tweaks and that way I hypothetically have the same uh, video quality and audio quality across videos um, so at this point it's now time for me to do the first pass of the edit now I do three total passes when I edit my videos and the first pass involves just cutting out all of the dead uh, space. So as you can see right here, I'm not saying anything, so I just cut that right out. Now what I do is I cut out all of these gaps for the entire video, and then I come back for the second pass where I watch the video in its entirety, and I make edits as I go. After that, I send it off to the publisher to double check, and then once they're happy, I then do a third pass where I come in and add things like the timestamps that you um, sometimes use, I'm sure, to skip to the spots you like, and I put an intro and an outro in. So at this point, I am now going to work through this hour and four minute long video here and cut out all of these gaps. All right, at this point, I have finished that first pass. As you can see, there are a whole bunch of little cuts. So now I have to go through and delete essentially every other cut to get rid of all the stuff that I don't want to see. All right, I have finished the first pass. And as you can see, the video is now 15 and a half minutes long, whereas it was an hour long before. So uh, it's definitely getting closer to the final length. Now at this point, I just need to essentially watch this as the second pass, and I'll make sure I don't see any mistakes and I'll fix those. And I guess it's worth noting that uh, when I do this pass, I usually do it at 2x speed just to make it a little bit faster for myself. All right, so at this point, I want to show you uh, essentially my shortcut for doing the timestamps. You know, I put them up in the top uh, corner and some people may wonder how I actually do that in a way that doesn't take an incredible amount of time. And really it has to do with these little markers. I just press M in Final Cut and I put that down uh, just after every cut where I want to put a timestamp. Now, fortunately, you can kind of lock in to see those times. So this will be helpful for me in the future to come back here and know that a timestamp is supposed to stop and start right on this spot right over here. At this point, I want to show another thing. You know, some people have commented um, or noted that I do not do scripting. I kind of do all of this on the fly. And because of that, I oftentimes flub my words. And at the end of many of my segments, I essentially say something that does not make sense. So what I just have to do is then record the correct thing. And then I just slide that right underneath. And then hypothetically, no one knows the difference when this plays through because it's essentially what I should have said anyway. And no one knows that in the original video take, I totally messed it up. At this point, I want to show off another one of these markers, but in particular, the fact that you can change what it's like. So I'm going to change this one to red, which is to do, because this is a special type of marker. This is a moment where I want to put a note on screen uh, telling people that they can skip forward towards uh, to a specific spot to learn about something. In this case, I'm talking about uh, telling them they could learn about this train later on in the video. But obviously, at this point, I don't know when that timestamp will be. So I just leave a little red marker there to know that I have to come back and fix this before the final render happens.
At this point, I've bumped into a spot where I could be a little bit clearer about what I wanted to say. So in this case, I am just going to come right over here because I have a pre-built little uh, box thing that I can copy and then paste right back in and then edit the text. So what I can do is add this over here. Uh, in this case, I mentioned that you uh, get points for having uh, money tokens next to trains, but it's actually next to the track that the train is on, so I want to make sure that people fully understand that by adding that text out onto the screen. All right, I just finished the second pass of this tutorial. As you can see, it comes in at 14 minutes and 40 seconds, so a little bit shorter once again. Now, at this point, the uh, next thing you'd think I need to do is to record the extended playthrough. However, what I want to do is render this as a proof video and then I send it over to the publisher. Now, I have them watch this whole thing and make notes for any mistakes I made. That way, I can put those corrections in and I will know uh, about those mistakes for when I record the extended playthrough. There have been a few times over the years where I, extend, I recorded the entire uh, video only to realize I got something major wrong and I had to re-record everything. So uh, sending this off first is a good way to save time. So all I have to do is start the render process, send it over, and then wait to hear back from the publisher. All right, here we are the next day after the one where I recorded the tutorial and edited it. And fortunately, the publisher got back to me very quickly and told me that there were no uh, issues with the tutorial. So that is always great to hear. Uh, usually there is a little thing or two that I have to fix, but in this case, um, that is not anything I have to do. Uh, now, um, for other videos, I've had to patch in corrections where I kind of zoom in and redo a bit and try to fix that in the edit. And very rarely, I have to completely refilm the tutorial because because I got something fundamentally wrong. Uh, sometimes uh, a single word missed in a rule book could have drastic ramifications on how a game plays. But fortunately, that's not the case. Uh, now, unfortunately, it is currently the afternoon of the day after I recorded this tutorial, and I spent about an hour and a half this morning recording the extended playthrough. Now, you don't see that right here because well, when I went to check the files, I found out that the audio recording was corrupted, and I didn't have it at all. Uh, now, as I mentioned before, in these videos, I'm recording with this headset, which goes into an audio recorder here, and then I record the video with my camera up there. Um, now, what happened was I put it into my computer and it wasn't readable, which means I just lost an hour and a half of work. Um, this kind of thing happens, and it can be pretty demoralizing. It's something that you just have to kind of push through, I guess. I, I don't have any other uh, way to get that audio back. I could, of course, try to use the awful audio from the uh, video camera up here, and a couple of times in the past I have done that for non-sponsored videos, but I am being paid to make this, and so I do need to redo this so that it sounds as good as it can. Uh, now, interestingly enough, I did not have any more SD cards that are compatible with my uh, recorder, so I had to just drive to Best Buy and do their curbside pickup to get a new SD card so that I can continue on with this project. Uh, there are just lots of ways that you could lose time as you're trying to do these things. Um, and this is the first time I've ever had a corrupted audio file that came from this thing over here. And I've been using this thing for years. So I am uh, playing on the suspicion that the problem was the old SD card that I was using. Uh, so I have a new one and hopefully everything is fine. But uh, talking about SD cards, I did want to mention that um, the way I record these uh, uses SD cards for both this and for my camera. And in particular, I have five of these SD cards for recording with the camera. Uh, the reason I do that is because I uh, have numbered them one to five. Uh, this one is number two. And what I do is when I run out of space on one of them, and most of them are 128 gigabytes, I then um, get the next one in line, I wipe it, and then I record onto that one. So I essentially always have well, about four or 500 gigabytes of raw video behind me uh, that I then erase once I uh, go back around the circle. Uh, in this case, I actually ran out of space on the SD card number one this morning. I stopped because I ran out of space and then checked to find out that my audio was bad. So I guess I got kind of lucky. I could have recorded for three or four hours and then found out that the audio wasn't working. Uh, so yeah, I have uh, this in there. I've got uh, 12 hours of recording time available on my audio recorder. I have 46 hours of audio time 
time uh, available. So I think it's time to start uh, recording the extended playthrough for a second time. Uh, now, uh, when I do this, it's a little bit different than my tutorials. In the tutorial, I am focusing on trying to get to teachable moments as quickly as I can. But in the extended playthrough, I am focusing on um, doing interesting things, uh, trying to explore all of the nooks and crannies of the mechanics that the game has to offer. Uh, sometimes I have uh, specific players that go after uh, certain strategies so that they will explore those while other players do other things. But in this game, I think everyone's kind of going to be doing everything. So I think it's time to jump back in and record the extended playthrough for the second time. <laughs> this morning, I only got through a couple of rounds and I do have eight more rounds to go through. So uh, yeah, let's revisit those first couple rounds again. So at this point, I haven't actually recorded anything, but I have noticed that the next one of these uh, round cards is not something that I really want to see. Uh, this one says that I will be bringing out three tiles, and in the tutorial, I brought out three tiles, and I put that in specifically to make a quicker round in the tutorial so that I could get through all of the uh, pieces of a round. But now I kind of want to show something different than laying out three cards. There are uh, cards in here that let me lay out um, six or seven uh, tiles, that is. And uh, a lot of people don't watch the entire extended playthrough. So I have to consider that many people are just going to watch another round. So I want to make sure this next round is pretty different from the previous one. So I'm going to cheat a little bit. And actually, the next card looks fine. It's going to deal out six cards instead of three. So that should look a little bit better. Um, I still cheat uh, when I'm doing the extended playthrough. I try not to as much as I can. I want the playthrough to be as authentic um, as is possible. But I also need to stack the deck sometimes to make things uh, run a little bit more smoother for the purposes of the playthrough and the story that I'm essentially telling with this. Uh, so yeah, now let's go into it now that I've put the card that I want on the top of that shuffle deck. You know, at this point, we have recorded for 42 minutes, and I am a little nervous about the fact that this is the first time using a new SD card after I had that corruption. So I think I am going to stop, make sure this all works, and then continue on. Uh, at this point, I've gone through two out of the eight rounds that I need to uh, for this extended playthrough. All right, well, it looks like everything is in working order, so we can just continue recording on. I gotta make sure I turn all of my recorders back on before I continue with the playthrough. All right, looks like we're good to go. Well, at this point, I have been recording for about two hours or so, and the game's going really well. Uh, we're going to go through nine rounds total, and we are starting off the uh, seventh round of the game. Uh, seven, eight, nine. Yep, that's right. So uh, it is important for me to take breaks. Uh, this uh, can take a lot of mental energy, even when it is not a super complicated game. So every two hours or so, I do try to stop and take a 10-minute break to kind of refresh my brain. So uh, yeah, I'm going to do that now. All right, well, it's time to get back into it. After my little break, I feel a little bit more refreshed, and uh, I am so close to being done. I'm about, well, two-thirds the way through this that uh, I am ready to just uh, focus down and finish this one. I'm hoping it should take another hour and a half or so. So, yeah, let's get back into it. Well, at this point, I have just uh, found myself in a situation where I need to redo things slightly, and I don't remember how they were before. Uh, so that means I actually have to stop recording, uh, and then I'm going to take out the SD card and watch it on my computer to figure out where things were, to set things back up to where they uh, should be. Uh, I also sometimes have to do this when I realize I've made um, a mistake and I have to like redo a player's turn or something like that. So yeah, I'll go and see how it's going. Uh, we're just entering the final round of the game and I don't want to make a mistake right now. All right, we are uh, reset up back to the way it should have been and I can now finish up this last round of the game. Okay, I've just finished the game and I've counted up all of the final scores and it looks like that took only about another hour and 10 minutes. So all told, the extended playthrough for this one took 
probably around three and a half hours, maybe a little bit under, which is certainly on the low side for me recording these uh, uh, playthroughs. Uh, Traintopia is a game with a lot of decisions, but a relatively simple rule set. Uh, but other games uh, can take a lot longer. For instance, the last game that I did for this publisher was Dark Ages, and the extended playthrough part took... I think nine or almost 10 hours. So if it's a really complicated game, this part can take a lot longer. Uh, uh, fortunately, uh, they're not always like this. Uh, this one went uh, really swiftly overall. And uh, now what I have to do is put this into the computer and edit it into an extended playthrough proof video. All right, we have the files in the computer. So I can now create the extended playthrough project. And now since I already uh, matched the audio to the video, I can drop all of these down. Now, at this point, you'll see this is a three-hour video, and I'm going to go through with my first pass. And I didn't mention this before, but, you know, when I am editing this first pass, I'm not really listening to anything. So in order to make the time pass a little bit faster, I'm usually listening to some high-energy music of some sort. Uh, the last few months, I've been listening to a lot of heavy metal in particular, but, uh, yeah, so I think I'm going to turn that on and start this first pass edit. All right, the first pass is done, and I actually lost the last 15 minutes of the time lapse of me doing that. But um, either way, I have now uh, taken a break, eaten lunch, and I'm ready to do the second pass on this extended playthrough. As you can see, it's currently about 58 minutes long, so I expect it'll be a little bit shorter once I finish watching and editing it all the way through. All right, I finished that second pass, and as you can see, I've put uh, little markers down for each one of our turns so that in this extended playthrough, it's easy for me to jump to those different spots. Uh, so at this point, the video is uh, 53 and a half minutes long, so now I just have to render this up as a proof and send it off to the publishers so they can check it for rules mistakes. After I hear back from them, I can go into the final render, and I can do the intro and outro, and actually, I'll be showing you how I make those next. Well, it is now the following day, and fortunately, I heard back from the publisher already, and they only spotted one very small rules mistake, uh, so I can easily fix that in the final editing pass. But before I can do that, I have to film the introductions and also the uh, wrap-up that comes at the end of the uh, playthroughs. Now, I call this the intro outros, and I film them all together. But in order to do that, I have to move this camera over to this tripod because I actually film this part on the other side of this table. Uh, now, before we actually get to that, I want to give this uh, area here a little bit more attention. Um, this is a pretty neat little mounting system where uh, this part right over here is actually a uh, microscope mount. You're supposed to attach the microscope right over here, look through it, and then do sciencey things. Uh, now, this is actually my wife Jessica's idea because I was uh, for a while looking for some way to move the camera around that was quick and easy, but I didn't have to uh, loosen everything and then tighten everything back up again uh, between each shot. Um, now, this was probably about three or four years ago uh, when she uh, came up with the idea to look for microscope mounts and we found one. Uh, we had to modify it a little bit. My dad has a milling machine and we milled out the end and threaded it so that we could put this uh, joint right here. And then for the last, well, like I said, three to four years, I've been using this thing and it makes the filming process so much quicker. As you can see, I don't have to loosen or tighten anything to move it. I guess that's a little bit of a lie. I do have a, uh, a knob right up here, which obviously controls where the camera goes. So when I'm recording, I'm just moving this around and I have a uh, screen right here that I can look at the entire time to make sure that the shot looks good. Uh, so I love this thing overall. In fact, you'll notice over here, I have a uh, 15 pound weight and that's because this thing is so cantilevered that when I remove this, the whole thing starts to go over. So um, originally I had a big bowl of water over here for the first few weeks and then we picked this one up at the store. Uh, so yeah, that is the uh, microscope mount arm that I use, but now I have to change this camera over. Uh, now, I bought this uh, video camera at pretty much the same time I bought this mount, and this costs about $1,200, I think. Uh, before that, I was using my iPhone, uh, which I'm using right now to record me uh, talking to you. Uh, but that was a pretty big expenditure, and it still is. So if I am able to do everything with one camera, I'm going to do that instead of having a multi-camera setup. So now what I have to do is take this tripod and I can put it down right over here. 
Now you can't see it, but on the ground I've spiked out a couple bit uh, marks so that I can always place this in exactly the right position. And I bought a cheap knockoff uh, charger so that I always have a charging cable right here. And then of course I have one over there. So that means I can just add this camera onto the tripod. And at this point, I am just about ready to record myself over there. Uh, now, before I do that, actually, I need to move this curtain over. You may have noticed it earlier on. This has black on one side and white on this side. It's really thick, uh, so that is uh, hopefully uh, helpful for the sound dampening in this room. But more importantly, this is very reflective. So what I have to do is move this all the way across the studio. And then the next thing that I have to do is reposition these lights. Now, these are actually a relatively new addition to my studio. You'll notice they are LEDs, and I bought these about a year or so ago. Now, before that, for about four years, I had these two large softbox lights. Uh, they took up a bunch of space, and they have a tripod that I was always tripping over, but they worked for about four years. In fact, uh, Jessica bought those for me for a Christmas present, um, the first Christmas after I started doing this, because, well, my lighting was awful, and I wasn't really sure what to do about it, and she definitely fixed that up for me. Uh, now, again, about a year ago, I bought these, and I was able to screw them into the ceiling, so I no longer have more tripods in here that I trip on, but uh, I also have to reposition these. Now, as you can see, currently both of these are pointing towards the white ceiling, and I use that for all of my game shots because it bounces the light off of the ceiling and then back down, and the ceiling kind of has some stucco-y kind of texture to it, so that means the light is really um, uh, diffracted or, you know, bounced around a lot, so that's why you don't see shadows down on my table. Uh, when I've experimented with shooting these straight at the table, then when I put my arm over, then you get these big, awful shadows. So I bounce them off the ceiling for the game, but, well, that's not going to work now. As you can see, I'm really dark over here just being underneath it, so what I have to do is I just swivel these over, and then I point them straight at this curtain. In fact, this curtain was bought when I picked up these lights strictly so that I could again have a bounce back. So in this case, I can move this one down over here. And once again, um, I experimented with having these shine straight at me, but then I had these crisp, awful lines around me when I was doing the uh, introductions and whatnot. So I bounce this off the curtain, and then by the time it hits me, it's nice and diffuse, and you don't see any of those lines. Uh, all right, I think it's now time to do the filming. So here we are on the other side of the table, and as you can see, I have a new microphone over here that's uh, recording me talk to you right now. Uh, now this is a shotgun microphone that is the newest addition, I think, to my studio. I picked this one up just about two months ago. Uh, these shotgun microphones are really good at picking up a, a skinny range of audio, so hopefully it mostly picks up my voice coming out of my mouth and not all of the bounces around the studio that I've tried to mitigate with these foam pads that you can see over there. Uh, now before this, I used a Blue Yeti that was attached to the same uh, boom arm right over there uh, for many years, probably about three or four years. It did really good for me, but I'm now experimenting with uh, different, slightly more expensive technology. Uh, now, at this point, I need to uh, film the uh, introductions. Uh, as you know, or you may know, <laughs> I split my playthroughs up into the tutorial and the extended playthrough, so I have to do separate introductions for both of those. And if I was recording a vlog right now, I would actually start right off with doing the introduction for the podcast that I then put the vlog out as uh, at the same time as the vlog. Um, but obviously, there are no podcasts for these playthroughs. Um, now, as you can see, there is a gray curtain behind me against the wall. Uh, it just goes right into a track right along the back of the studio, and you can see there's just a white wall over there behind it. So I have to make sure this is all flattened out. And then the first thing that I have to do when recording is actually uh, get a good image for the thumbnail for the videos. Um, I will be the first to admit that my thumbnails don't look amazing. They're not super graphically catchy, um, but something I've done pretty much forever is have a image of me smiling, and I need to have that image. So I have to look at the camera and smile smile a bunch, so I may as well do it. Well, I think one of those should probably be good enough. Uh, so now I just need to actually record. Um, you may notice uh, over here on the table, the game is still set up. I usually put this away as one of the last things, and fortunately the camera view is uh, just cutting those out and also cutting out this uh, shotgun microphone that's just barely out of view so that it is as close to my mouth as possible. Uh, so yeah, I, I may as well start doing the introductions. I usually do the tutorial first and then the extended playthrough. And honestly, this is one of the 
more challenging parts of the entire playthrough experience for me. Uh, sometimes I can be stuck here uh, messing up on the same sentence over and over again for like 15, 20, even 30 to 40 minutes occasionally. Uh, sometimes I get this done in like eight minutes flat and it's awesome, but um, well, I'm not sure if that's gonna happen today, but uh, either way, I should stop procrastinating and actually do it. Well, that was really fast. I just did that in about two minutes. And the reason for that is because of a very recent change. Uh, and that is that I'm no longer giving a brief overview of how the game works in this introduction. Instead, I'm doing it at the start of the playthroughs when I can actually point to the pieces. That part is the spot that I usually would get caught up the most, which could just eat up an incredible amount of time. But uh, I just got the introduction done really fast and I uh, love it when that happens. Uh, so now I have to do the introduction for the extended playthrough. Great, that was the second of the introductions done. That one usually doesn't take me all that long. Uh, and again, the first ones don't take as long these days now that I've changed things up to uh, make it a lot less harder of a uh, mental thing for me to load in all of that stuff to do on the fly. Um, again, as you can see, I don't use scripts, which is maybe a problem, but this is the way I've been doing it for six years now, and this is probably the way I will keep doing it. Uh, so now it's time to do the wrap up. Now this is what uh, comes in at the end of each playthrough. And for this, I try to discuss how that game went, uh, maybe why the winner won and why the loser lost, uh, maybe pivotal moments that happened in the game of interest. Uh, one thing I try very hard not to do in these wrap-ups is give my subjective opinion about the game. Uh, the reason for that is because um, very often I'm paid to make these videos. For instance, for Trantopia, this is a sponsored video, and I don't really feel ethically good about saying the game is good or bad in this paid for video. Now, if I end up playing Traintopia later on and decide to cover it in my impressions vlog, obviously I will give my uh, subjective opinion about it then, but I was not paid to make that vlog and I am being paid to make this video. Uh, so yeah, it's time to record this. Uh, once again, I don't script anything. Uh, sometimes there's a thing or two I want to get to, um, uh, in particular, like a big mistake that wasn't big enough to refilm, but something I wanted to point out. Uh, in this case, I don't think so. I'm just going to wing it and see what I say about how this game went. Okay, the outro is done. So now what I have to do is put this into my laptop and start doing the final pass before I do the final render of the files. So here we are back at the computer, but before I even put the intro and outro in, I do have to come over and find the mistake that the publisher pointed out. Uh, looks like right over here, I said something was worth three points instead of four. So I am just going to go to my templates once again, and then put a corrective box in there so that people aren't confused when they watch the video. Now, once I put these in, I also have to make sure that they are not in the way of what I'm actually trying to describe. So I usually just slide it up out of the way just like that because, yeah, I'm talking about this over there. Uh, now, fortunately for this video, that was the only thing that the publisher pointed out. Uh, sometimes there are several things they point out. Occasionally, there are 15 or 20 things that they point out that I have to put corrections in for. Uh, in this case, I am done. But the next thing to point out is the fact that I have a couple green marks over here. Well, I put those in and these are spots where I actually need to re-record some of my audio and patch that in because I say something um, so silly that I think new audio is better than putting text on screen. Uh, so I'm going to take care of that next. Okay, those edits are done, so now I can move on and put the intro and outro uh, into each one of these videos. I, of course, have to get rid of the awful audio, and uh, you'll see that um, the color is kind of red. Unfortunately, the LEDs that I got tend to show red on the camera, so I once again have a uh, template that I made that will fix that with color correction at this point. Well, I have just noticed that unfortunately I pulled the curtain over a little bit too far when I was showing you all uh, what it looked like here for the behind the scenes thing. Uh, that means I recorded a little bit of the wall and that means I have to fix this. Uh, fortunately, I can do that relatively easily, I think, by scaling the video in just a little bit. Then maybe I can go up a tad and now that uh, mistake is gone, thankfully.
Okay, I've now inserted both introductions and the outro into the extended playthrough, and now it's time to really do the final stuff, where I will be adding all of the stuff on the screen. Um, now for this, I can make all this stuff a little bit smaller and then come back to my templates. You'll notice over here I have one called Tutorial. Now this is something that evolves every time I make any changes, and I just use this and I copy and paste it every time, and then this has pretty much all of the different options that I could want. You could see kind of stacked on top of each other. So I just need to edit all of these things to fit into where they go within this video. Well, all of these are in line, and you'll notice we do need the cover of the game to actually go down here. So for this, I almost always just go to the Board Game Geek page for it and save that cover down onto my computer. At this point, I am now starting to work on the uh, timestamps that show up in the top right. As you can see, I have a basic one, and as I mentioned before, this little mark tells me that this is a spot to do a timestamp. So this is pretty simple. I just look over here, and this is at 2 minutes and 32 seconds, and I know that this is skipping towards the part where I talk about the preparation phase. So I simply go over here, and I say skip to, uh, let's see here, prep preparation phase and then I can put that in at 232 so right there I now have that in and as you can see that was really not that hard and now I just have to go through and do it for the rest of these different marks After I have all of these timestamps in, the next thing that I have to do is double check each one. Uh, I am uh, not a great speller, and I've certainly made mistakes not only with spelling, but also with just doing typos with these uh, numbers before. And once I send this out onto YouTube, I cannot fix that. So I always give it a double check now. Looks like I didn't make any mistakes. So now what I have to do is go back to all of these red markers because these are spots where I want to put a note on screen to reference people to other timestamps. So I can go through and resolve all of them. One thing I actually do to help myself out with these is I put a different type of mark, which is called a chapter mark, down whenever I see a spot that I know I'm going to want to call back to to make it very easy to find that spot amongst this 15 minute video. Okay, it looks like I am done with all of that, but before I can move on, I have to put the uh, last thing over here, which is, of course, the credits with the producer credits and whatnot. Um, now, people who support the channel on Patreon at $10 or more a month uh, get put into these credits, which is super awesome. Also, people who donate to uh, PayPal at uh, larger than $10 amounts uh, get put up into there for certain amounts of time. So I definitely want to give these people the credit that they deserve for really helping uh, keep all of this stuff going. So, uh, of course, many other people support the ca Patreon campaign as well. Uh, but these people in particular obviously are donating 10 or more dollars a month, which I super appreciate. So I can just add that right over here at the end. Okay, the tutorial is done. So now I can move on and do the final edits into the extended playthrough. Now, as you can see, I've already inserted these parts in, so I can just squish all this stuff down, and then once again go to my templates in order to bring the extended playthrough uh, copied things in so that I can slot those in. Now we can just grab them right over here, and then uh, this time, each one of these blue marks shows our turn. So I'm just going to show a skip mark to each one of our next turns in case somebody watching is just interested in seeing one player's perspective instead of watching a 57 minute long video. Okay, I got all those in. So once again, I have to double check these timestamps. It's a good thing I checked. <laughs> Over here, the timestamp is correct, 5355. However, I don't want that to say our next turn. I want this to say to the wrap up, and I would be so annoyed if that got rendered into the final video. It looks like I do have a red mark over here. This is something that I need to double check. Uh, something happened in the third or fourth round. And I put this over here to remind myself to check and see which of those two rounds it actually was. 
Looks like it was the third round, so now I can put this in for sure. Great, I am now done with the uh, extended playthrough, which means the final pass is done, and now all I have to do is do the final render, and then upload these onto YouTube, and then post them, obviously, so that everyone can view them. So, first things first, I have to start the render process. Well, I figure while that's rendering, I may as well clean off the table so that I can start uh, the next project, uh, the next game I'm working on. I don't know the rules to at all, so I need to restart this whole cycle once again, and it's a lot easier to do that when there is not the previous project out here on the table. Okay, that one is all packed up, and <laughs> once again, I have extra bags after I pack up a new game. I'm not sure if this happens to anyone else, but I have a bag full of excess bags from other games. It seems like there's always a couple more than I need, and I have just so many more bags than I need. Uh, either way, that has finished up cleaning this up, so now I can move on to the next task. At this point, both videos are uploaded onto YouTube, so now I have to create thumbnails for them. Now, I already did some awkward smiling into the camera as part of the intro-outro, so I can bring that over here and then just find a good moment in there. Now, I usually just do that by looking over until I am, there we go, smiling, and then I can just maximize the screen until I find a good moment. You know, I think this is fine, so now I can just do a screen capture, and then I'll bring this into Photoshop. So here we are, and I can now bring this new image of myself smiling over into a template that I have for these. Uh, as you can see, it's been a little bit since uh, these two photos were taken, and my hair's gotten a little bit longer. I also have to bring in the cover for Traintopia, and then once I drop that over here, I can get rid of the previous assets for the other playthrough I did. In that case, that was Oceans. After that, I just have to nudge all of this stuff around to make sense in the template. After that's done, uh, I have to stretch out my background. You'll see there's this white area. My camera is not actually wide enough to meet the sizing for the YouTube thumbnails. So I just stretch this out a little bit. And so far, nobody's actually noticed that I do that to the background. Now, at this point, the tutorial and playthrough thumb is done, so I can export that. And then I have to make one for the extended playthrough, and that's pretty easy to do. Now that I have created thumbnails, I can put them into the videos themselves. As you can see, YouTube automatically generates some thumbnail options, but I never like those. Instead, I always use the ones that I created. After that, I can come up here and give this a description. And then down here for the description, I actually use a neat program called Text Expander. It lets me type in a small piece of text like this and then it automatically matches that description to something I've put in already to fill this stuff in. Now, this is an application that costs me about $4 a month, but I use it all the time for video posting as well as answering emails, and so far, I think it's worth it. So, I now need to fill in all these gaps to make sense for this video. And as you can see, I need links to the other video, and I can just harvest those back and forth. Next up, you see in my descriptions, I put the timestamps that also show up in the video. So I just have to type these in based off of the tutorial over here in Final Cut. So I simply Alt-Tab back and forth, uh, checking those numbers, and I write them in. After I complete that for the tutorial, I put a couple in for the extended, but over here it's a lot simpler. I just uh, skip to the final scoring and the wrap-up. All right, the corrected version of the extended playthrough is now up on YouTube, so now I can fill in these timestamps and fix other things like uh, filling in this publisher spot here on both videos. After that, I have to fill in some other things like the tags that go along with the videos, and I also have to check a mark down here to say that this video does include paid promotion because, well, it does, and I like to be as uh, transparent with these things as possible. Next up, I can modify all four of these areas. Now, this is what makes the video watchable and visible in everyone's subscription feeds. Uh, the playlists obviously adds it there, and then the end screen and cards just put other things that show up on the screen at various times, like links to the website and whatnot.
Okay, the next thing I have to do is click the save button, and the moment I do that, this video now gets pushed out to everyone's subscription feeds. So this is the defining moment. Uh, the moment I click that, now you all could see it on your computers. Now I'm not actually done just yet. The final thing that I do is I add the subtitles that uh, let me put corrections on the screen. I actually have to start uh, things off by putting one of these in because if there are no subtitles at all, then it won't even show up as an option for you to turn on. So I just put in a little thing right at the front and I use my text expander to help myself out here. And I like to have this show up as soon as the gameplay start of the playthrough begins. Now that that is done, this video is officially fully posted up. I have to, of course, add the links to this to my social media and whatnot, but I don't think it's important to show me doing all of that. Well, at this point, the project is officially over. The video is fully posted up on the internet, and I have logged my last time into Toggle for Traintopia. As you can see, this one ended up taking me almost 14 hours, and I do think that this number is a bit inflated because I recorded this behind-the-scenes uh, video alongside it. It made the actual playthrough process a little longer, but as you can see down here, um, I've broken down all of the different things that I've done. Um, editing the extended playthrough took three and a half hours, but again, that was a little bit longer than usual because my computer was going slowly, trying to capture the video for the screen while also uh, editing this in Final Cut. So yeah, that's going to bring this behind-the-scenes video to a close. I hope that you have found it uh, informative and interesting. It ended up being significantly longer than I expected, but I did go into pretty much every single nook and cranny of this playthrough process, and I hope you felt like you were making this alongside me. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including all of these producer-level Patreon backers. If you too would like to directly support the channel and the creation of videos like this one, then please go to johngetsgames.com support to see a variety of ways with which you can do that. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button down below as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.